Hey there, YouTubers, and welcome to another video. In my last video, I said I was doing a new segment. I forgot to mention that in these segments, when I do top five best, the follow-up will be a top five worst. It'll be released within the same day or the next day, but there will be a top five best, and then right away, a top five worst. So, in the last video, it was top five best con video game consoles will be today we'll be doing top five worst video game consoles number five the Philips CDI well who can say anything good about the Philips CDI no one why okay let's see first when the CDI was released it was released because Nintendo said Fuck you to Sony and said Philips will join with you. If that didn't happen, where would Philips be? I'd rather not see Philips. Two, Nintendo gave a couple of their franchise to Philips to play with because they went CD. So they did Zelda and Mario. Come on, they're big flops. Nobody gave two shits. Really, Mario Hotel? Come on, since when does Mario own a hotel? Zelda, you're not saving the princess anymore. You're not fighting Ganondorf. What are you doing? Flop. The games that were exclusive, aside to the couple of Nintendo games, they were pretty shit and nobody cared. Number three. Cool. Everyone's got a VCR. That's amazing. But, Philip said, let's take that. Triple the size, so now you have a system this big. Weighs about 30 pounds. And you have three, four hookups just to hook up to your TV. Really? Who in the right mind would take... Okay, first of all, back in the 90s, people had cabinets for their electronics, like their systems and their VCRs and stuff. This will take up your entire cabinet. You have to leave it on the floor. It's a tripping hazard. Come on. Now, and the last reason, come on, the Philips CDI didn't last even a year before crashing. They still have their license, but they didn't do nothing with it. Number four, we're gonna go really old school, the Vectrix. Yes, in the 70s there was lots of consoles out there trying to fight like I said in my last video, Atari stood out through it all. And here's one that stood out to be the shittiest console of the 70s and the birth of the console war, and that's Vectrix. You can say now Vectrix is very collectible because it did stuff it at the time that others didn't do, but because of what it did is what made it so shit. Okay, sure you had certain games that were Different, yes, but they all came with overlays. You just stick them on the screen Now you got a game. Why not make a fucking scenery instead of giving us an overlay? That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard of And it looks like a mini arcade at home. They have to plug in. I Don't care to do that. I'd rather go to the arcade If I want okay number three there are games that were clones of each other, like tennis, pong, hockey, like those things. Back then, a circle was not a pixel. They had to make a square. So since they were making a square, you play hockey, you'll play tennis, or pong, or whatever in that field. They're all the fucking same shit, unless you put the overlay. Come on. Come up with some better ideas to make them different. Number three. The Sega Saturn. Sure, the Genesis did so well. Made Sega the top dog behind Nintendo. But the Saturn killed its name forever. Reason? They made the Sega 32X add-on. No, the Sega CD add-on first for the... For the Sega Genesis, which... Kind of flopped because CDs weren't there yet. 
Then they make the 32X, hoping they can go 32-bit add-on to the Genesis, trying to keep the Genesis alive. Sure, amazing, Genesis stayed alive. Everyone loved the Genesis, hated the add-ons. Great. Because of the failure of the add-ons, they said, screw the add-ons. Let's make a system to fix our fault. They went 64-bit. I'm sorry. When you already have failing add-ons, and then you release a system quickly after people say, you failed? Your system's gonna fail, no one's gonna buy it. And then developing team did not give two shits to focus on the Saturn. Why? Because they knew it was bad and they rushed the release date, rushed the build, and they did poor advertisement to even get people to buy a bad system. Because after the Saturn, this is, this is Sega with the Genesis. This is Sega with the CD and 32X. Sure, because they're add-ons. People said, take the add-ons off. So they went back up. Saturn? They went here. Then they made the Dreamcast. Because of the failure of the Saturn, the Dreamcast didn't even stand a chance. Now, number two. These are two systems. One system and an add-on I'm going to put together. That is the Atari Jaguar and the uh, Jaguar CD. Atari w went and burned to hell with the video game crash in the 80s, Nintendo picked up the scraps, brought life back to video game consoles. Atari said, hell, let's leave this dumb. Let's make some system again. Let's try to fight. They did okay because they said screw the console wars. We're gonna go to bit war. Nintendo is 8-bit. Sega is 16-bit. Atari will be 64-bit. Not many people bought into it because people were scared because of the crash that happened. But they did advertise. Do the math. 64-bit better than 16-bit. 64-bit better than 8-bit. Do the math. And they always had like a school teacher pointing at the board saying do the math. Wrong. Play the system. It's not 64 bits. It's 32 bits. Then, they made the CD to go. Oh, let's go CD form. Yay! Sega's already at 32 bit, already working on 64 bit. You're still at 32 bit. Nintendo just went to 32 bit. I'm sorry. What What are you doing? You're You're stuck. You're stuck. Late. You're You're two years behind. Here's the other problem with the Jaguar. Not this, just the CD. The CD had four hookups. So you hook up to your TV, then to your power, then to your Atari, and then you're good. Why the hell do you need so many plugs? You already have the Jaguar. Just let the Jaguar do all the work and just add that on. Sorry, four plugs, too much. Now here's the other big problem. All the consoles, you see they had little, like, where, they, where you put the cartridge, they had a little door to protect from dust. They had good ways of protecting dust. The Jaguar, no door. The pins are, here's, here's the door. There's no door, here's the slot for the cartridge. This is how far out it was. Seriously, you're gonna stick the pins out? Pins get really dusty, get damaged easily. Cartridge, had a little holder, cause they said, hey, how do you pull your cartridge out? Let's make a holder. Those holders are faulty as fuck. They broke off so easily that eventually your board came out of your system. Dude, there was a horrible idea. And number one, and everybody knows what the number one worst console of all time was. The Nintendo Virtual Boy. First of all, the name just says it already. Anybody who knows it already knows. The biggest failure in video game ever. It was a bigger flop than Atari making E.T. Extraterrestrial. Bigger flop than Atari signing with Namco to release Pac-Man onto their system. This was a huge flop. First of all, their goggles. You put them on your eyes. Cool. That's a nifty idea. I feel like a fighter jet. I feel like one of those futuristic sci-fi films. Amazing. No. You have an LCD screen that's red and green. Very, very bright. 
Think about it. The brightness of this room right now we're in. Stick that right in front of your eyeballs in red and green. That's gonna hurt your eyes. Even on the box. This is the funny part. You're trying to sell a system and when you buy the system on their box it says may cause blindness. Please be cautious. How do you be cautious if you're telling people you're gonna get blind? That's a stupid advertisement. And if you're already telling us that's gonna happen, why the fuck are you releasing a system that does that? Nintendo mind? I don't know. Third reason. They only had 15 games in total because they discontinued the system in less than a year. It was about 7 months into a game system's release. Gone. 15 games, very easy to find, except for two games. And this is what gets collectors to say why. Golf and bowling. Sports games are hard to find. But hey, they're not too hard, but they are hard. Now, you got the weird part about the system. Goggles that go around your eyes. You can't hold on to it because you have to hold a controller. Okay. There is no strap to strap it behind your on, on your head or anything to hold it to play. Nothing. None of that. What do they give you? A mini tripod for your desk. Since when do I want to sit on a chair, on a desk, plant my chin, down onto the desk, stick my eyes in into the console? That is going to hurt my neck, my chin, my eyes, my forehead. And my elbows and my forearms. Really? Couldn't you at least make it strapped on your head? So at least you take away one negativity from your system? No, you have to give people fucking pain. Even back problems, neck problems, chin problems. You name it, they had problems. Apparently, the biggest problem, kids can get blind according to your box. That was a horrible system. Glad they stopped it. Another company did follow in their footsteps and they failed in two months of their release too. So look at the failure of the Virtual Boy. Don't ever make that mistake ever again. These. Now these were the top five worst video game consoles of all time. And now, as always, enjoy life and keep on collecting.